This is Jonah Hill, and you're listening to the only podcast that matters. Throw gang, we are joined by the Don Dada of the dance floor, the physics pharaoh, the fool's gold governor. His piss must be red the way he eats beets. He goes so dummy on the Ableton, he must be ableist. You got multiple BMs, he got infinite BPMs. The lord of the label, the day out duke, he must work at Applebee's, how he's serving up the samplers, the drum machine madman, the Roger of the remix, getting music exec money, that's the real mic check, the prince of production, DJ, producer, and record executive A-Track. A-Track, how the hell are you? I'm pretty good right now. Yeah, Grammy nominated. Apparently, I'm a Raja. Yeah, like that. <laughs> How are I you, dude? Raja? That. Thank you for I'm coming. Good. Yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely, I'm dude. Um, the first thing we want to do, a track, yes. is a little fit check. And yes. you came through very spicy today. I'm not going to spoil anything, but the <laughs> okay. choice for you, because we want to know everything that you're wearing. Do you want to start uh, top down or bottom up? Which way you want to go? I'm going to do bottom up. Yes, Thank sir. you, sir. Yeah, so what kicks, what kicks do we have on today that you so graciously left outside? Yes, thank up. you for that. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. It's an Asian American household. <laughs> Manners. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nice Canadian boy. Yeah. yeah thank you. <laughs> kicks, pretty simple. Uh, just bands, uh, skate highs. Mm. They look but fresh. Fresh. Were those like a recent cop in New York? They're a recent cop. Um, you know what it is though? It's the um the vault ones. So like the just a little detail. It's still it's still a regular, it's still band skate highs, but the 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 leather, the leather um solo, whatever just goes a little higher. Right, right, right. It's the notes thing. you need it's those little vault details. Yeah, it's a little thing. It's you're little, you're a man that cares about details, yeah, obviously. I right? care about details <laughs> and also I, I don't like to be too flashy. I'd rather just like have a couple things, but it's not a little thing. But yeah. like the like the the fellow connoisseurs when they see it, they know. Yeah, and if although you know, I'm you know not fit. really trying to be like, yo, I hope someone notices my bulk <laughs> bands. Based on everything else you're wearing, I'm sure there's other things that people would notice. Yeah, too. there's a lot of mohair patches about. I'll say that. You, yeah, you got the animal kingdom going. Yeah. Anyways, uh, socks, socks, uh, champion. Socks. Okay, is that uh, your normal go-to? Just champion socks. Champion socks or Adidas socks. Mm, okay. Yeah, I normally just like white socks. Yeah, athletic socks. Clean. And the pantalones? The pantalones are Marnie. Yeah, dude. Marnie with yeah, with the little uh, with some little creatures on the around the knees. Yeah, some good tactile. Like if you're a fidgeter, you can just like start you know yeah, rubbing yeah, on yourself yeah. or whatever. Right, which I am. <laughs> uh, Pretty soon those patches are gonna be bald. Yeah, dude. You know, male pattern. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I need some hymns. Mar- yeah. Marnie <laughs> pattern baldness, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I like this. Yeah. Um, Sweater is, is an electric pink joint. Yeah. It's a little pink situation by a uh, Sir Dries. Ooh. And I um, didn't know he was knighted. <laughs> Should be. Yeah. 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 Maybe uh, in Belgium. I don't know. Millhouse yeah. uh, Van Noten. Dries <laughs> Van Noten. <laughs> Millhouse Van Houten. And um, what's the T? What's that? The T under the sweater. Oh, the T is, uh, oh man, you know what? I forget what this brand is. Like, I finally found a white tee that. Well, we I got like. to do a tag check, dude. All right, I'm yeah, gonna, sure. You well, finally I'm found gonna, one. I'm not going to touch your neck. Tell me what's going on here. I okay, he's not going to touch the Grammy nominated neck. It is no nationality. Ooh, good mm-hmm. Danish brand. N O seven. Yeah, I was going to say it's some sort of Scandinavian thing. Yeah, oh for sure. Like, so they make the perfect white tee for you and for your body. For my weird. Your weird body your, type, your weird fucked up your, shit, yeah. your poutine shaped body, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah single fry, yeah. shoulders as wide yeah. as as a poutine fry, yeah. more cheese curd than man. <laughs> and thirty years old, and, and we got to talk about the wrist work, dude. What do we got um, over there? I mean, uh, you know, I think we're on the same page. Just uh, yeah, sub submariner. Uh, like birth year? Is it vintage? What do we got going on? No, this. When did I get this? This is a little more than ten years. Oh, okay, at this point, yeah, this is nice yeah. little investment, dude. Yeah, a little more than 10 years. And, and the earrings? The, and the studs? The studs are nothing, man. Just little. CZs? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're little, no, but I mean, who knows? They might have literally from one, one of those spots in the Diamond District. Just, just a little little diamond stud. Yeah, just a little little dancing. We're keeping it classic. On the lobes. Yeah. Again, what an what understated are, guy. What are the panties, A-Track? Ooh, I wear Druthers uh, underwear. Okay. What is that? Is that like some fancy boy shit? Druthers, Druthers is actually my friend's brand, but I, I love Druthers. I, yep. Yeah. Dr- Druthers, uh, shout out to the homie Adam G, who's a New York OG. Shout out Adam G for cradling A Track's cock and balls. Yeah. Yes. I guess you could say that A Track had his Druthers on that one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so um, he's on A Track crack. <laughs> right. Back like Cook Track. Yeah. Um, That's it. So your boy's brand. My boy's brand that uh, first kind of made, made their name uh, Making Great Socks. Okay. Mm. And, um, and where do you go? He from works socks? his way up. 
Worked his way out. From socks to cocks, baby. <laughs> Went yeah. from socks to uh, beanies. And, oh, he did and, a roundabout. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Took a and, detour and, at and the boxer dome. Briefs. From the, from the <laughs> yeah. head to the dickheads. <laughs> so there, so boxer briefs. Yes. You're, you're, okay. Nice. Yes. From the beanie to the weenie. <laughs> yes. From the beanie to the weenie. <laughs> from the feetsies to, to the beansies to the weensies. <laughs> yep. Shout out is to it Adam G. Yeah. Yes. Wherever you are. He's yeah, send, us, send us some free, some free. <laughs> yeah, fucking. I want to fucking. Are they expensive? I want to tap in, bro. No, nah, they're not. They're, they're very affordable and great quality. Hell do you get yeah. a lot of free clothes? Like, do you, you must have friends in fashion, obviously. Do they send you a lot of free shit? Uh, I have. I don't really want to get much free stuff. You want to support the homies? I do. I like to buy stuff from my friends' brands for real. Like, I I, I buy shit without telling them. <laughs> um, and then when people, when brands want to send me stuff, like on some seating shit, I've kind of. I've tried to learn the art of like politely graciously saying, being like, just nah, being like you Gucci. know what honestly like I just I wear what I wear um you like if, what you like yeah, yeah yeah and some people have like some people at you know in those sort of seating positions just want to take a certain amount of boxes and, and right. be able to tell their right, boss right, like right. oh of course so yeah. then I'm like cool so you don't mind if I give this a dick check yeah, yeah. <laughs> right so so you know I'll tell them like I'll give this to the homie sure I just want to send this to you okay yeah. um if not, I'll just be like, honestly, give it to Damn. someone. You know what a good tip is? Um, say, like the package comes, say that, oh man, there's been a lot of like theft in the neighborhood recently. <laughs> like, a lot of package theft, you yeah. know, somebody just yanked well, it off. My the doorman stoop. been slacking. Yeah. I do give shit to my doorman. Oh, nice. Um, He's just dripped. <laughs> yeah. But, um, and druthers. I mean, n- nowadays it's such a thing to like just put the picture in the story. Of so course. I, I feel like that's even more why. People oh, th- oh, dude, a thousand actually, percent. Right? They just yeah, that story. So now that I think about it, actually, in recent years, I do, I'll, I'll just keep up, give people my address more often than not, just to be like, all right, I'll put on the story and then yeah. do whatever. Hey, tracks address is out there, kids. Or just like, yo, just why don't you- pay them up and pretend you work for a brand. <laughs> tell the, right. the publicist, hey, take a photo, send it to me, I'll post it, yeah, whatever, yeah. and then like send it to a homeless shelter or something, you know? Yeah. There's that. Take the photo for me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean- <laughs> Do your work. Do my work for you. Yeah. There was definitely like help me help you. The, the, there was the heyday of like the the um, you know custom Heineken bottle. Oh kind of yeah, shit from like the maybe ten yeah. years ago. Like I think Team Epiphany sent me a lot of things for a long time. Oh yeah. Um, shout out Coltrane. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Coltrane exactly. And <laughs> you get the Heine dunks. Uh, no, but that was, was like that, wasn't that that wasn't a promo. That wasn't I it. Think. Okay. I think it was just like a. Like, it was like here's like a here's like a diamond studded. Yeah. Heineken bottle or some yeah. shit. Some shit. Yeah, not a, big, a C&D that you can wear on your feet. In a big box. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't drink. I haven't drank in years. And, like, I'll, like, I'll get, like, some sort of bottle of, like, 1492. Was that some what it's called? Fancy shit, yeah. Some yeah. tequila, like, once a year. And I'll just be, like, okay, it just goes... It's going yeah. in the ca- cabinet next to next, next, yeah. last year's That's bottle. Like Whenever I have guests, right? So when people come over, it's like a full bar, dude. Yeah, full exactly. service bar. Just like, I don't pay for That's any nice, of this. Damn, yeah. we gotta we gotta visit you at the crib, yeah, bro. Right? Yeah. Gotta pull up on you, yep, dude. Yep. Um, and we are sipping on Green Point's finest. We are. You're a simple man with simple needs. Water. That was your only ask. Every box yes. checked for a track. Um, okay, fit check, drink check, complete. A track. Let's get into the meat and potatoes of this podcast. Mm-hmm. You recently dropped an album with Cameron. You wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> Is he still the funniest rapper in the world? Oh, he's up there. He's he's certainly up there. Um, yeah. <laughs> Is he? I mean, it must be so much fun. Even yeah. though, how long does this album take to come together? Nine yeah. years. Nine yeah. years. <laughs> I think <laughs> dipshits dropped in 2014. We were still at Complex, yeah. like yeah. banging that shit in the uh, bullpen, dude. Yeah, Is he? Got- <laughs> Is he like the dude that just on the group project he doesn't do the work? <laughs> No, um, he, he's the dude that just pops in and out and then like, what okay. you, you know what I mean? And what you get is what you get. And, um, he's hard to pin down. Yeah. He's, um, he's a bit of a comet, um, <laughs> but shooting star, yeah, but when you, when the, but the a comet that does show up and when, yeah. you, when you get him, you, you get, you when that asteroid hits, yeah. it's nuclear apo- yeah. Ap- yeah. Uh, apocalypse there. It it's yeah. just like. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny because I just I think he maybe also wasn't used to maybe like sitting on the song for a little while and changing stuff to it after he would just kind of show up like, all right, bing, bang, boom. Like there's there's this really, there's a Simpson scene where like Krusty shows up to record like for the oh, yeah, yeah, doll. Yeah. <laughs> and then, hey, kids. Yeah. yeah. And then the recording engineer wasn't even like running the tape yet. And Krusty's already yeah, like, all right, Krusty, uh, we're on now. Yeah, he goes, he runs back to the limousine that's full of like women and champagne and yep. shit. It's that's almost Cam. like so that. Cam like, is Krusty the Clown. Yes. <laughs> I'd say that as the highest compliment. Yeah. Is he fun to hang? out with and like work with yeah 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 what's like the what's like the best cam memory to come out of this nine-year project 
Uh, <laughs> I mean, we played ping pong once. Who won? Uh, I beat Cam. In his defense, he smokes and drinks. <laughs> it was later. So they were uh, not performance enhancing drugs. Yeah. Right. Like I probably waited till it was 3 a.m. and everyone's drunk. And I'm like, okay, let's take things. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I you're, still have all my like capacity. You're, you're like, who wants more 42? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pass it out. Um, I beat Cam. Dame is a menace. Dame really? completely oh, wiped the floor with me. He's but, nice with it. Yes. He must be a good shit talker too, I'm sure. Oh, my God. oh yeah. That's what that's the, his primary role. He's a PhD in it, dude. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, that but you know what, degree. one time yeah, exactly. <laughs> um some of the early rec- recording sessions that we did for this project we would just just go to cam's crib um in jersey he has a studio at his house yeah just be like i'll just come to the house and um one time he cooked for like really it was like almost he 10, cooked yeah or? he cooked for like a whole group of people how was it yeah well, how, it was great what he, he makes shrimp and steaks Fire. it was great oh surf and turf for the yeah, fellas yeah 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 he did he literally made surf and turf and it was great that's yeah. fire he's dude. lobster with the mobsters bro <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's got arcade machines at his house like he's a great host it's just that then there's a point where you don't really hear from him right. for a little yeah. while but then he shows up again. Like nine years. Something like that. Who's counting? But then yeah. you see him again. Oh, dog, how are you doing? How's your family? It's like an absentee good? dad What's... that pops in at various milestones yeah. in his kid's oh. life. I'll be right back. I got to get some more shrimp. <laughs> yeah, exactly. for a year. At the uh, monger, dude. Are you, is, he, is he still coming back? <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, and, and the nine year thing, obviously that the pandemic had a lot. Like sure. That, that extended. True, that. true, true, true. The true. record was pretty much done. Oh. But wasn't it was supposed to be an EP, right? The Federal Reserve EP? Yeah. Or? Yeah. And that just so fell it, through. I mean, it's many not that it ago. fell through. It's just that during all those years, we all had time to think about things. Right. Mm. And there was a point where it was just like, From like when we to first, playing. like when we put out dipshits, Spotify existed, but it wasn't really a thing. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because like now, Part of the decisions at like in, when when we were actually like planning the release, it was like, oh, on Spotify, there's like tagged artists. Right. Like, okay. Do we do camera on camera, uh, <laughs> comma, a track, comma, Federal Reserve? Do we have to create an artist profile right. for Federal Reserve? Like by the way the shit works now, it just didn't even really make sense to use that name. Interesting. But in the beginning. Well, that was going to be like the super group. Kind yeah, of. it was going to be the Lack name of, of the project. Right, right, right. Because also Dame is a part of this project. Okay. You know, so it's supposed to be like the thing that the three of us the made. The triumvirate, yeah. Yeah, good word. I like that Three-headed word. beast. Yeah. yeah. Um, but um, basically, yeah, we started recording in like late 2013. I found some of the early pictures. I found huh. the picture the first time that we linked up. Didn't you have some day. shit shaved in the side of your head at that point? Was that <laughs> your that, swag that was robot? totally different? I have, no, I, I, I have had patterns in my hair at some point in history, okay. not in 2013. <laughs> oh, uh, kind of lingering question on the fit check. When was the last time you had your hair dyed? Oh yeah. Um, and how frequently do you do that? The roots I, are radical. My, yeah, yeah, my, my roots, I, 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 That's I, the I, look, that's part of the look though, right? That's the A-Track been, signature I, look. Yeah, I, it, it ended up being that because I, you know, I'll sort of like get the fade on the side of my hair and I'm like a chia pet. Like my hair grows <laughs> really, really fast. I have like Zary thick man. Moroccan hair that just <laughs> comes out. Um, and it's that good oil, bro. Yeah, dude. yeah probably. Um, <laughs> I get my hair dyed every like two or three months. Okay. Oh, OK. Have you ever done not blonde? Yeah, during the pandemic, too, I was okay. like, "Fuck it!" Oh, you during, went, you went crazy. Yeah, during the going pan, off brand. Yeah, you yeah, went Joker yeah, mode. <laughs> yeah, 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 during the pandemic, I was like, "No one's gonna see me anyways," and I went to see my guy Danny Moon in LA, who's just like my hair guy, and um, I was like, "All right," because he's like an artiste. He's right? like the he, guy now, right? He's the guy. He does crazy designs for people, um, and then I go to him and I'll be like blonde <laughs> and i can tell that i'm not like the basic utilizing. package yeah yeah exactly and, and i i can tell i'm not like yeah. getting all the artistry out of him so. one a track please yes <laughs> was, the usual like, okay, is your face sure. in like a poster on the wall of like let me get the let me get the number one the a track is blonde <laughs> probably doesn't want to like oh yeah i'm like underutilizing his skills. did he do tyler's leopard shit is that him like the uh, or i think it was like evan mock shit okay and, like, like yeah, he does oh, like leopards. He, he does, and, yeah, and, and, and again, an artiste, as you said. Yeah, yeah Cuddy yeah. and and um, mm. oh, Cuddy. Juice from Flabber Zombies. He'll do like crazy shit on his beard. Um, and uh, maybe, yeah, maybe. one when during the pandemic, of course, that first shit was closed, and then there was a period where like certain things were starting to open up a little right. bit. But it was still, I still wasn't traveling. I still wasn't bro, how traveling. crazy were your roots? when like barbershops are closed um i mean my not even just my roots that my hair itself like it was, i just i the the jufro you're know, froed out life yeah yeah yeah. I was, <laughs> and um looking and, like a member of the mc5 dude <laughs> man and i went to see him at one point and i was like all right danny just like okay, fuck me up <laughs> just just do your thing like Please. just whatever you want yeah 
and and he did some mix of like various pinks and whatever and a whole bunch Fire. of shit. He'll he will take the mullet. Oh, and he even gave me a mullet. Like he cut my hair different. I had a mullet with like lavender accents. <laughs> I was like, all right, you really took yeah, I yeah, said, do dude. your thing. When you you, took you fucked seriously. me up, fam, literally. Dude. <laughs> you looked like your you looked like your Marnie pants. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You go you went down to the block to the Dominican barber, just got your shit buzzed. Yeah, you got a mole hair um, mullet. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I, I <laughs> Danny if you're listening, if you're listening, like no you didn't. <laughs> I love you, Danny. Uh, there was a point oh, okay, yeah, looks uh, great. Uh, a little bit later where I, I did kind of get a bit of a shape up right. I'm mm. like, okay, let's no more the shape, but keep these colors. Right, right. But actually the colors like muted after a little while and, and it, it did gave a I mean nice he's a master dude he, he knew he had the, the he had the he's long literally plan the in, in place yeah, time, the time. well no so the other thing I did I did twice I, I didn't do blonde because I've been doing the blonde thing for like five years which I'm, that's a long time and that, there's um I don't remember if it was right before or right after that also I told him okay go nuts and he did a a time release what a time release red so it was red. So what he does is he bleaches it. Yeah. And he does the blonde, and then he put a time release red, which washes off after like two three weeks. Okay. So you're like you're like strawberry red for a bit, and then two three weeks later you're like you're like a it's like a tootsie roll pop. You're like a like, gobstopper. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah Everlasting, yeah, exactly. dude. Yes, I am the human gobstopper. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you wasn't there. Came out. It is a tight. How many track? Like nine tracks. Yeah, it's nine tracks. Um. Oh yeah, so 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 the vintage time, cam, vintage cam beats. Yes, yeah, yeah I mean, so, so we started recording. In like Talks about getting head from Monica Lewinsky. Yeah. He did, he which does. James believes is a true bar. That I, ch- I choose happens. to. I choose to believe. <laughs> I, I, I give dream to imagine. Why, why, why would he lie? Just, yeah, you, know? you must have had to dream a little bigger, Don. Yeah. So we started recording. Um, we made a couple joints. We had this one song, Humphrey. Put that on SoundCloud because that was the thing at the time. Um, and there was a bit of a sample issue with that, so we had to take it down at one oh, point. Damn. And then we did dipshits, and we're like, okay, that's that's a video. <laughs> that's a smacker. That's a banger for sure. Shout out Just Blaze. Shout out Just. So Just and Cam hadn't worked together in like ten years. That's why I remember it being a big deal when yeah, that shit came out. Yeah, and even like putting Joels on the hook, like everybody yeah. was kind of like on yeah. their own little thing. I hit up Just like, yo, I need to play you a record. I kind of need you on this Cam. He did joint. the drums, or he he's like added more since. And definitely did the Tom Phil, like yeah, kind of yeah, spruced yeah. up the. You can tell, right? The signature did the shit. outro, like just, just steroids. Like he yeah. did the steroids, right, basically. Right. And um, <laughs> and we shot the video. Shout out to Ricky Says, who had just done a Beyonce video, but was still at Supreme. So it's kind of like, okay, yeah. we're gonna do like the whole like uptown meets downtown Absolutely. thing. Video came out fire. Made the airbrush T-shirts just for the videos. <laughs> then actually made those for sale too. Um, and then we're like, yo, we're doing Federal Reserve, blah, blah, blah. We're doing an EP. We announce it. Noah's got the vision, that complex. So he's like, all right, we're going to give you the cover before yeah. anybody else. <laughs> Sorry, Noah. We didn't <laughs> yeah. finish the record. So it's like, so we just had a car was put before the horse, the horse yes. and carriage. Well, yeah. as, as it were. Kid yeah. Cudi had just been on the cover for four months in a row. So <laughs> yeah. <you> know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, then, and then, you know, which is. <laughs> the maximum per year, because he was also going to get four months the following year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> for like the quota was filled yeah. for that. The next year. issue is about his grocery list yeah. for this week. You know, <laughs> Cuddyplex, baby. He's had more yeah. complex covers than anybody did. Than Mark Echo. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a fact. Um, but yeah, then we didn't finish the EP, and you know, sort of. You know, and Cam, then life, Cam life goes has, on tour. Then I yeah. go on tour. Right. Blah, 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 blah. Life has oh. life has a funny way of happening. Exactly. Yeah. So, and then it turns into like two, three years later, Dame. Sort of waking up one day and be like, you know what? Let's finish the project. So him <laughs> camming, calling Cam, calling me. Did you assume it was like never going to happen? I or just was like- on some like, hey, we'll see. Yeah. Um. So then he gets us back together. And um, we did a couple sessions in Vegas. Uh, Ooh. How's made that? a bunch of new joints. That was dope. It was, Dame was, had the foresight of being like, we got to do this not in New York and not in LA because- right. You know, he's just going to get distracted. Right. There's but too much. People going. are going to want to yeah. show up to the studio. Right. right, right. Ask him to do this. Like, let's go to Vegas That's and lock in because there's no distractions in Las right. Vegas. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. As someone who, I mean, I know you like, like to, I know you go out and you like to experience life, but as someone who like doesn't drink, do you, is that hard to like when you're in like work mode and maybe like there are distractions and there are like temptations surrounding you? Nah. I used to drink and then one, at one point I just stopped drinking, but like, it's not a big it. deal. I'm not like and your skin looks not, great. Yeah. Thank you. Well, t- to be honest, my skin got better after I stopped drinking. Exactly. Yeah. That's um, what I say. Yeah. It's we'll not even, <laughs> I don't even really like use the word sober or right. whatever. Like it's out of, out of it's not this, your whole personality. You, you have other too. shit going on. <laughs> that's, yeah. Someone asked me the other day if I'm straight edge and I'm like, I'm not even sure. Am I? Yeah. 
<laughs> do you Maybe? smoke? Yeah. No, I don't do drugs and I don't drink, but I just don't really make a big deal it's out of it. Thing, but, yeah. Right. Um, but, but, you know. He's a humble narc. I respect yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> so you wrapped up, you wrapped up the whole, the whole but, project but, in Vegas? Um, yeah, we did some recording there. Um, and we ended up recording a little bit more in LA at Dame's like, gallery space a <laughs> oh, few right. months later. I forgot he's a gallery owner. Yeah, yeah for sure, man. Dame, Dame a the renaissance, renaissance man. man. He yeah. is. And um, um, by like 2018, we had like plenty of material. And then- We still I, needed four years. Sorry? Still needed four years. Yeah. yeah well, the <laughs> pando happened, but- True. Nah, I, I had to like- replace samples i redid a lot of the beats like i recorded camp because like, of clearance issues like what happened with humphrey sometimes um yeah i mean definitely most of the beats started as demos that had some sort of sample and then i would go to some of these spots that like replay samples and then you get it replayed a little different in some cases quite different and there was at least one and i want to say two beats that I just figured I could get something better for those beats, but I had a performance out of Cameron. So right. part of what I'm doing is just capturing a performance right. out of the, yep. you know, elusive snow leopard or whatever. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, oh, he's here. You got the flick. I just, here's the tempo, do something. Yeah. And then, and <laughs> then later, yeah. And then later on, I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to completely change. Like the song Think Boy and the song What You Do, those were completely different beats. Right, Tim, right, so maybe, right. so maybe you're the problem child. Maybe yeah. you're the guy that, I mean, I, you do I, too I much work in the group I, I, I fiddle with shit, but I'm also like, I'm a <laughs> remixer. Tinkerer. Like my, my, right. my approach to production is remixing. Tinker. Okay. So I'd tinker yeah. for a while and Cam definitely wasn't used to that. He was kind of mm. like, well, you, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, yo, you and, wasn't there. <laughs> and then, yeah. So then we, <laughs> and then we signed it to Empire in 2019 and then, and then, and then the bando happened. Well, and then. He also decided to put out Purple Haze 2. Yeah. And then, there were some songs that like came off, came off our project, but then went back on. But the pando happened. Blah yeah. blah 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 blah. Here we are. It's out now. It's, it's out. It's like I mean, we were reading like the review. Like he's not. You guys aren't like chasing trends or chasing clout. It is like Cameron rapping yeah. on. It's Cam kind of like what people want. It's like you know your curation and then this guy who's a legend his bars. This is my homage to to you know one of my favorite rappers mm -hmm. for sure one of my favorite you rappers this was your application to be a member of the diplomats yeah, to get a chain <laughs> oh man i don't know if i got a chain yo back in like did you take a rap music slot <laughs> shout out to a rap that's not yeah, shout out a -Rap, back dude. in like 2006 five or six before i started fool's gold i was already a big dipset fan and i made a song with uh jr Ryder, hell rail and 40 cal all like the the bench boys, the, saddle, the satellites. I still lived in Canada. It yeah. was just whoever I could. Well, no yes. all, disrespect. All those no disrespect guys can those spit guys, though, but they are they're definitely super beat, dope. Beat, beat they're team. super dope. But you it was get freaky Ziki. <laughs> couldn't get freaky Ziki. You might have been in jail. Um, you know, showed up to New York, cash in hand. It was definitely on some like you got the money. Oh, right, so. <laughs> wow. Um, but it was great. I had a great time. All three of those guys are lovely. I love those guys. <laughs> lovely guys. Lovely guys. Yeah. Well, okay. So you wasn't there. Dropped right after you dropped this dance floor jam with Lee Foss called free. Yes. Here, here's a question. So, and we're going to talk about like, kind of like the dance, um, dance music scene and world for a little bit. Like Lawrence and I, we're not really part of that world. How do you know when a single that you've made, like an EDM single is a success? Is it when like Solomon is spinning it at Pasha at five in the morning? <laughs> Thank you, New Yorker. For <laughs> yes, exactly. I don't even know what Solomon plays. Like I don't, I don't see his track list. He's, he's dope though. And, and um, I, I like his original music too, but uh, you know, electronic music, the house music, dance music, there's, there's a ton of like sub genres. Yeah. And like, what is, the, what is this? This is just house to me. Okay. I don't oh, okay. Know house, soul, soulful house. Maybe. I mean, uh, free is, um, a, an interpolation of a Goody Mob record actually. Oh. So, so it's, if you listen to Soul Food, the first Goody Mob album, yeah. literally the intro oh, shit. is, is a uh, classic album. It's a classic album. And I was just, um, you know, do you, do you know me? I'm a tinkerer. Like this was like over a year ago, I was listening to the Goody Mob album and I was like, wait, this intro is fire. It's just <laughs> CeeLo singing over like a, 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 a Wurlitzer or a Rhodes. I think it's a Wurlitzer. Um, obviously much slower, but I was like, this is dope. Like this was, I could speed this speed up, it up yeah, yeah. and put a, and I, I kind of just did a little blend, like put it on 45 and put a house beat and put it on my, you know, IG story. And a bunch of my friends were like, what the fuck is this? This is dope. This is a really good song. And is I'm that like, how you crowdsource? What yeah, you, is that the yeah, sign? That's yeah. what you're looking for is the if, reaction if, from the if homies? My, yeah, if my DJ friends are like, what's that? I'm like, hmm, hmm. maybe I should finish this. Yeah. And I got one. Maybe yeah. I should tinker some more. Yeah. A year. Do of, you do a lot of that? Do you take a lot of hip hop and, and kind of interpolate it or extrapolate it into 
electronic Sometimes, music. but there's also kind of a cheesy version of that. Here, <laughs> yeah. let me put you guys on. There's, there's a, a lot of cheesy versions of EDM, by the way. <laughs> yes. There's a thing called G House. And, okay. And, G House? Yeah. And this and G House uh, <laughs> is a kind of cheesy trend that happened where house producers would sample a hip hop vocal and like screw it, screw it up or screw it down a right. little bit, just yeah. make it a little pitch down. And um, Ball, soul, hall, ball, focus, and just put it over a house beat, and it got very generic, and um, it was almost kind of fetishized. Like even to be perfectly honest, like racially, it was a little weird. Like, Sounds oh, like some bar mitzvah shit. Yeah, it's kind of like oh, let's, <laughs> let's, let's let's get the cool street cred, right? Right, yeah, right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. Um, it, it got a little weird. So I don't do that, but um, but I don't know, man. I just like. I, you know, I, I listen to music all the time from ranging from, you know, old shit, so right. disco jazz to, to hip hop, to house. And, you know, my kind of comfort zone is like bouncing from one In to those the pockets. other. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's the, the, the way that I came up with the record free was, you know, eventually got it resung, made a whole, a new beat to it. Mm. My homie Lee Foss helped me kind of like hone in on the direction of mm. the new beat that I was making. But how do you know that's how, but how do you know it's popping? If I mean, you're like at a cool party and like somebody yeah. puts it on? Or like the thing that's really specific about um DJ based music and electronic music in general is that like we all play each other's tracks. Right. So to me the way a track the way I know that a track is doing well as far as what I'm concerned, because yeah. I'm not really trying to make shit for the radio. Right, right, right. If it goes there cool, but that's Duck a sauce, byproduct of you're not Duck seeking Sauce Barbara Streisand yeah. is a multi platinum <laughs> record that, that we thought was a B side. Like, I just make shit that I feel if it goes there, great. Right. But I'm not really going for that myself. What I like is when other DJs tell me they play it. Right. Right. So, like, even earlier in the year, I put out uh, two EPs that were made on an SP1200 uh, sampler. And one of those tracks, Spit, I, even just lately, I've been getting a bunch of DJ friends being like, yo, I played Spit. And so, oh, that's, sick. that's like my barometer. That's what you like, want. Oh, cool. People are playing it. We support the artists each other. who actually respect. Yeah. Or like, yeah. And it's just like using it's, your art. It's, it's an ecosystem where like, you know, even like as DJs, we will like sometimes publish like our top 10 or top 15 chart. We'll put a chart on Beatport, which is the, the, the marketplace where we buy, Got you it. know, uh, house tracks. Um, like, in the sense that, like, we're not really playing streaming music. So, right, right, like, right. And the iTunes store is just weird now. So, Beatport <laughs> is where you go to buy electronic music. We'll publish charts of our of the tracks that we're all playing. So if I see so and so from the UK or whatever charting one of my songs, I'll be like, "Oh, cool!" Oh, and then I might char chart one of their songs, or like even like we send um, like DJ promo servicing is a whole thing. We'll blast out our tracks to a whole bunch of other DJs. DJs so like get, a big group chat, <laughs> like when with well, all the DJs, now there's like, like a plat there's okay, platforms yeah, yeah, yeah. that are made for that, but like even like there's a whole etiquette to giving Ooh. feedback to when you receive the promos. It's just so it's like, like getting the, just like getting free clothes. So there's politics, right, there's politics, everything's politics yes. to some degree. Yeah, yeah. But in a way that's actually useful. And then if someone likes a track that I made, I might hit them up and be like, yo, do you want to remix the next single? Mm. And we, re we remix each other. So I'm for me, it's the it's the ecosystem of the DJ. You gotta what, show love to get love. Yeah, but it's 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 um it's actually really healthy. But it's funny to remind myself sometimes that like a band's not gonna play another band song. A rapper doesn't care if another yeah. rapper is playing. You know what I mean? But with DJs, is there ever beef where it's like, yo, I, I made you not with you, but like other guys that are maybe or like gets toxic where it's like, yo, I was you were my number one. What the fuck? Why I wasn't on your chart? What the fuck? You're talking about MySpace top eight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Because no, yeah, yeah. that was a real thing. <laughs> yeah, the absolutely. Yo, I put you on my shit. Yeah, yeah. you the said fuck you know, am I? Right, but no, with Pay with forward. DJs, it's nah. yeah. All right, it's, it's, who's on your number one? Who's your number one right now? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Probably some shit, some shit on Fool's Gold. I just, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I sign shit that I like. My own oh, shit. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, what's like the electronic music state of the union in 2022? Because again, as two kind of like outsiders, and you yourself stated that like there is a lot of like cheesy shit, and it's so hard to like keep up with the micro, yeah. micro subgenres. Yeah. The New Yorker profile, obviously, that's like, I just fucking, well, I read that and then, you know, had to ask about Solomon. Um, <laughs> yeah. He's dope. He's, he's the king. I mean, even. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, sorry. My question is, what's the we're talking I've, to the I'm, king? What's the state? <laughs> what's the state of the union of electronic music yeah. in 2022? Is it is it healthy? Is it strong? Yeah. Yeah, I would say that it's it's back to being healthy because you know to backpedal a little bit. The first half of the 2010s was like the big EDM explosion. Right. Yeah. Is that like right. like Skrillex and yeah, all that kind of right. shit? Right. When 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 Diplo. yeah, but also. Oh. Even, <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, Avicii type shit, yeah. levels, right. whatever. That uh, brutal you know, drop. Sweetest House Mafia, Calvin Love, Harris, sure. Getta, Getta making songs with Akon. That kind Found of love in a hopeless place type shit. Yeah. Sure, yeah. they were kind of on the tail end of that. Um, but th- that was like ch- chart top. Yeah, exactly. Sound. There were that was the there sound. Were, there was EDM records in the top forty. Which right, right. Was rare for North America. That you know lasted about five years, and then that. Bubble definitely burst. Oh, yeah. Okay. Also, like the Vegas residencies, that still exists, but it, right. you know, there's just less of them. So, you know, to me, in the second half of the 2010s, DJs had to like soul search a little bit, <laughs> mm. and 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 meanwhile, they were too busy chasing the bag, basically. Or it was, okay. just, it was just sort of like, oh wow, now there's you know there's less um, there's kind of a filtering out right. of, of mm. what was going on you know on the business side, um, and at the same time, if anything, like that's kind of when SoundCloud rap. Took off and, right, right, right. and and hip hop in general finally ascended to the dominant status that we kind of all all always knew that it right. should have been at yeah. anyways. Like culturally, hip hop's mm-hmm. been everyone's language yeah. for a long time. The dominant cultural art form, without a doubt. Yeah, yeah. Um, youth music and what have you, you know. But now things have kind of leveled back out. You know, house music, which is probably like the evergreen side of electronic music, house is kind of what never goes away. Yeah, is is you know has been having a moment again. Um, there's festivals, you know, there's like big flashy festivals that book like the, the, the like neon sh- carnival or whatever type shit. Yeah. And, and, and but EDC and mm, right, you know right. what I mean, and, um, electric zoo and then, um, ultra, you know, those are the kind of bigger names of festivals, but then there's kind of like more boutique festivals. Like you, you can go to crossed where it's 21 and over and it's more classy disco house and cool. kind of like. A little bit, you know, more grown up and chin strokey. What's your, <laughs> Duck Sauce just headlined that. Like um, that. What's your favorite festival to to attend as a fan? Ooh. Um, I mean, I've I've been going to Coachella every year for a long time, and I you still, played Coachella. Yeah, a lot. I mean, I I played the first Coachella ever in oh, 1999. Wow. Big fucking uh, flex alert. Yeah, but I've played a in yeah. 99 as a 15 year old. 17. 17. Damn. <laughs> yeah. It was, and, it, and back then, how's the, how the influencer scene back then? <laughs> non existent. It was literally a rave in the desert. Yeah. Right, I'm trying right. to remember if it was 98 and 99. I think it was 99. But it was the first one, regardless. The, so I definitely played, I definitely played. Do you played still the first fuck with Coachella, Coachella in, in terms of like the behemoth, like cottage, in like multi billion dollar cottage still, that it, it is today? I, I, I still go every year, regardless of if I play or not. Mm. It's changed, sure, but I still think it's dope. Um, but I just have the artist pass clearance, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's be clear. He ain't uh, no civilian. <laughs> you know what's cool with Coachella to me is like even when there's some years where the 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 top three names are a little bit less interesting, the, those middle names are always dope. Okay, you can always that's what you're the, there. For. You're for the chin strokey shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah. I'll I'll, I'll I'll go. You know, I'll go to Mojave and Gobi and whatever. Right. And just like you know, watch weird bands. Vibe and, out. Yeah. But you're there for the music. You're not there for like the brand houses and like. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. For you're sure. not pulled up to the Revolve House. No. <laughs> 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 no, I'm, I'm I'm there to get like a slice of where's where music right. is at. Even the Yuma tent for DJs is is dope. So I'll go watch the Martinez brothers there. Right. And I'll go, you know, uh watch like you know, Hudson Mohawk type of performances. Mm, HUD Mo, like, 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 Black Mo, Friend of like the show. Band, like I'll I'll watch Turnstile, I'll watch, you know, shit like that. What's the genre of music that uh that you really enjoy that might surprise people? Uh maybe like a guilty pleasure, not to like shit. No, on. just like Zeppelin is kind of forever my favorite oh, band. Really? I should have worn. I was literally wearing a Zeppelin tee all day today. Okay, and I was like, yeah. I'm not, like, I can't wear the Zeppelin tee to see a track. Zeppelin guy. Yeah, yeah. But you know what it is? Like the shit that you listen to when you're 11. That's yeah, six you. Are you like a classic rock guy? Yeah. Okay. For sure. Just like your that's what your parents played, or pa- there's pa- part or of Dave it, put you on. Yeah, it's both, right? Like my um, some there, there's some stuff that my my dad would listen to, but that's maybe more like Joe Cocker, okay, Steve <laughs> Miller Band, Bonnie Raitt, <laughs> of course Steely Dan, all gas, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Midnight um, Smoke, Midnight Steve Smoker, Winwood, Poker Gas, you know, like just the, the dad shit. And then um, when Dave, when my brother started playing the guitar, because he picked up the guitar at, at like I want to say age nine or something, okay. he got into like Hendrix, mm. rocking out, one. dude. Jethro Tull, King Crimson, <laughs> yeah, shit yeah. like that, Pink Floyd, you know. So, um, and I was just the younger brother listening to whatever he was listening to. Yeah. So, so of course I, you know, Zeppelin is what stuck with you by osmosis, probably the most. Yeah. Like physical graffiti is. Oh, that's your is, number that's one Zeppelin shit. record. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm not really like a. I'm the, the Zeppelin two man. Zeppelin two's dope, of course. Like all all the albums are dope, but like there's a point where I was like, you know what? Um, I mean. If we're gonna go with the first, th- the first four, 
I'm a little more partial to partial to three. Okay. But Houses that of the Holy. Shit. Yeah, Houses of the Holy. But um Great album. immigrant song is Zeppelin Three, I think, right? I think. But um Houses of the Holy, Physical Graffiti, and even like presence. Ugh. No. You know, I, no, me, I, I like some shit on presence. But I like yeah, but those, I mean listen, man, you're yeah. clearly a fucking you're a get yeah. the lead out but, fucking but yo, over here. Uh physical graffiti <laughs> is funky. Like wanton song and and um um even like down by the seats, yeah, shit like that. Like I, I like those joints. Well, I hate to break it to you guys, but uh, we've hit our Led Zeppelin quota. <laughs> Led Zeppelin talk quota for the decade. Okay, um, dude. okay. So Coachella <laughs> is your favorite festival to attend as a fan. What about favorite venue in the world to DJ? I'm at? To, hold on, I'm trying to think. I'll, I'll give you one more example than than. Um, oh, okay. Than Coachella. Than Coachella. Um, yeah. What's like a, what's a good, What's a good? What's, what's a, no one likes to go to Glastonbury. Oh no. What's the, a Glastonbury is dope. But it's you, it's mud, man. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bowl in that regard. Mud. No one a, actually give us like a deep cut festival that has Oceaga Festival yet. in Montreal has the best catering in the world. <laughs> the best Oceaga services, dope. yes, best catering, <laughs> and also um, what's the order? Yeah, huh? what, what's what are, the order? Like, what kind of food is it? It's just poutine like, and it's just, no, no, no. Poutine is like <laughs> three a.m. drunk food. Yeah, not before. Yeah. So you're order. never eating it. <laughs> or back when I used to drink, I would. Well, it's not what you want to eat. It's not what you want to put in your stomach before you go up and perform in front of thousands of people. <laughs> exactly. right? Exactly. It's g- gases. It, you want the guys on stage? The eight track shit his pants clip go viral on <laughs> no, Twitter. We don't want that. We don't want that. Um, <laughs> he shit the Marnies. <laughs> wow, that's the full quote. Yeah, um, and. Uh, what's the joint in, in in Japan? Is it Stereosonic, the one that's like in the woods? I think that's what it's called. That Damn, that's dude. really the suicide enjoyable. forest. Yeah, catch Logan Paul out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about what about to perform at? What's like your favorite festival or venue in the world to DJ at? Uh, I don't really have one. Oh, really? Like, yeah, because he wants to book everyone. Yeah. <laughs> no, but you know, what? like I'm very much of a. I'm very much of like, I'm a little bit of this, but a little bit of that kind of guy. Like I'm very like, I play hip hop, but I play house. Yeah, right. Like I work with the OGs, but I work with the young guys um, and but, girls. But, right, but, well, but, yeah, so, so, yeah. so like for fest, for even as far as gigs, my shit is like, I, I'm, I'll be psyched to play, you know, the Sahara tent with duck sauce at Coachella, but then I'll play like a, a you know, 500 capacity joint in, in like, in like, Scotland. So no and preference to the sold out stadium versus the dank, the, sweaty basement. Nah, because every you know, any DJ will tell you the, the clubs, like most DJs will actually prefer the clubs. Right. The clubs where it's like just a couple hundred people, but like you're playing for three hours and you can you can go all over the place. You can go yeah. weird for like a right. whole it's a journey, baby. Yeah, exactly. Like that's that's actually a lot more gratifying than in the festival where, where you're just kind of like making them jump, which is cool, right, but right. that's where like, it's like high energy the whole time. Yeah. That's just, that's no a group. dose. That's a dose of sugar, which is cool. But like the club, Speaking which, like, do you have a shtick? Do you have like, like Steve Aoki throws cake in the crowd? Do you do anything? Does, yeah, what, as duck sauce, do you pour duck sauce? Yeah. Do you have a duck sauce hose? What's your Gallagher, a watermelon bit? <laughs> I actually have made the Gallagher Aoki comparison before. <laughs> oh shit. Um, but he, that's the home. But um, no, I mean, if anything, my thing is scratching. Like, I don't oh, have, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, that's, I'm just lucky to crazy. have. Yeah. yeah, just, I'm lucky to have, like, the little Swiss Army knife. Of, yeah, like, right. oh, by the way, I can also do this and this and this. And but then. that's kind of like the shut up and play the hits for A-Track. People want to hear you scratch, like. In some cases, especially, you know, it's funny. If I play a city for the first time or if I play a city that I haven't played for a long time, that's where I'll get, like, the older fans that just kind of, like, <laughs> I can just point, I can tell, like, by the thing, the jeans. I'm like, this, this dude right yeah. here. Is just waiting for me to cut. Play dipshits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one time I remember, like once in a while, I'll get someone to that'll be like, "I thought you were gonna do your 1997 DMC routine," and I'll be like, "That was 25 years ago. Yeah. I'm not even sure where those records are. Yeah, yeah. I don't even. I, that was before I wanted, the first Coachella. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Like if I want to do that routine, yeah. I probably need to spend a From whole day hit yeah. puberty. <laughs> like, you need to start. You need to start literally. stretching your fucking yeah. uh, no, I need your to, rotator like, cuffs. The muscle memory has to come back yeah. on that shit. I've I, I've actually been really lucky with the whole like navigating different genres thing because I have DJ friends who have kind of like evolved to different yeah. genres over time and and who get like the you know cross their arms kind of fans sure. just waiting there and being like I didn't pay good money to see you play, play drum hip-hop. and bass like yeah, that yeah, kind of yeah. thing and I whereas like even when I first made the sort of leap to electronic music because the first like 10 years of my career was all hip hop. Right. And then around like 
2006 or so, I'm like, oh, let me throw this, you know, this bloggy shit and, <laughs> you know, th- you know, th- throw a bunch of stuff together. Get bloggy with it. <laughs> yeah, get bloggy with it. And like, <laughs> I never really had fans being like, what the fuck is this shit? They'd just right. be like, oh, this, whoa, okay, They'll this like is it. cool. They, you were, you were, they didn't like, they weren't hating. You actually like led yeah. them into like, like discovering new shit. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm, I'm lucky to have had that. Yeah. Um, shout out to fans, dude. Shout out to, to fans. Yeah. Do you, is there a name for your fans? Like the trackies or something? Like, <laughs> no. <laughs> the A-lister. Yeah. It's the A-lister. Yeah. The you know what's funny? I was even just speaking of that EDM era. The, just the other day, I was remembering. Boom. 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 <laughs> Car alarm music. How yeah. I, how we called it. <laughs> um, we uh, There was a point where like every manager was like asking their artists to do the same thing. And. I'm glad that which my, was what yeah which, what? and and so part part of those things was like oh your your fans should have a name oh hell you yeah. know <laughs> um, <laughs> and actually you know what you mentioned the the chain smokers I actually like the name they they, they would call their fans the pack because there's a pack oh, of cigarettes yeah. and I'm All like right. that's kind of clever so I like, like that one <laughs> but you could have had the a track pack yeah oh it was right there like, but I'm just glad that duck no sauce, one sauce like you know yeah, the, the ducklings yeah, yeah the the, the dumplings are like the crumb the crumb munchers yeah. <laughs> you know so <laughs> sure I'm just glad that I never did right. that the same way that I'm glad that I never planked oh I no. never planked did you damn. ever did you ever Harlem shake no but also I can't dance so like oh, I, I haven't yeah I'm just like all the I'm, rhythm is cerebral and and just yeah the, the and you ever right, do the, you ever do uh, the mannequin challenge. I don't think oh, so. Oh, that's a like, song, dude. Oh, that, that was yeah. so great. Um, okay, let me ask you a question. And I think this is something that you've never, ever, ever done before. Uh-huh. If the party's going crazy, yep. and let's say Lawrence and Jimmy are on the ox, because um, mm. you can't DJ, we're just on the ox. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's the quickest way to kill the vibe that we should avoid at all yeah. costs? What should we not do? Is it play Led Zeppelin? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's a time and place. Dropping for presents. Some Zepp- for- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With the levy breaks. Yeah, dude. <laughs> uh, I mean, in general, I think it's just like everybody's got like the songs that they really fuck with themselves. Mm-hmm. Like you know, no one else does. Yeah, that no, no one else. Dude, that's so, the, yes, so yes. like, so I shouldn't put on MF Doom. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, again, I I, I love the mask and oh, and oh, um, that's yeah, right. Yeah, I, yeah. There's, maybe there's a time and place for that. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> by myself on the subway when you're with the, when you're with the unks, dude. Yeah. <laughs> but like, probably like step one of of learning to play music for other people is like knowing how to tell the difference between what you fuck with and what you're right. psyched to hear versus like right who's the group of people that reading, the like, room, reading the yeah, room reading the room yeah because when i i really remember when i was first starting to uh play oh, records you- out like everybody has like embarrassing moments that i remember like what i was yours i remember playing um a dj quick album cut that i really fucked with like something from the like, album like, balance and options like okay. I just and not just that you know quick makes party music but Nine times at, out of ten is but at, yeah, but at, slapper. At, yes, he's got a bunch of joints, but at the wrong party where I just didn't really, oh. look, you know, like it probably wasn't in the West Coast. And it was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Was it like a record scratch? Like everyone's like the fuck? No, but I remember one of my DJ friends looking at me like, "You're gonna do that? Okay, <laughs> <laughs> this, is what, this is what we're doing." Yeah, you know. Yeah. All right, never mind. Um, so <laughs> let, me, let me fade this out real quick. Right, let me quickly grab another record. So generally speaking, like knowing the difference between the shit that you really fuck with it. So then how about this? What is one song in mm-hmm. your estimation that will get a fucking party going? Not like fucking get, instantly. Yeah, instantly. What if there was one? Like if it was like, a I mean, for every, for every era, there's a swag surfing or mm. <laughs> Ooh, classic. Yeah, yeah. But like there's, you know, many years prior, it was Annie up and it was Simon says, Ooh. but Ooh. Much, okay. Know? So, so what is it? This but, is going to come out in 2022. What is, you do no, that? the thing that's weird now is that because of the pandemic, people are still fucking with records from like, it's still Finetto. Oh, really? Shit, really? You know, like, which it's, is all timer. Yeah. What is your, okay. Between love Sosa, mm-hmm. what, right? Love Sosa. Love Sosa. Bobby Schubert, a hot neighbor and, and Mo Bamba. Mo Bamba. This is a debate. What is the, what is the, what's, what's the best the, of those three to just fucking yeah, get the crowd the, going? What, which one is the number one anthem of those three? De- it depends on this type of crowd though. Mm. Okay. Um, you said between Love Sosa, Fanetto and, and Mo what? Bamba. And Mo Bamba. If anything, Mo Bamba kind of f- is faded away. Oh, Ooh. damn. So Schmurder so, had the staying power because he would be my oh, then, and bronze the, uh, Shmurda, hot friend. Hot Hot friends, yeah. Yeah. Because Love Sosa, ten year anniversary. We've been talking about a lot on the show. Still fucking good. All timer, dude. Yeah, yeah. I, I I would have to. I mean, these bitches love Sosa. Yeah, they do. They do. They do. They really do. Yeah. So, so the answer is Finito. That's what we're saying. Probably. Yeah. Finito. That that's probably the most damn. Wish we still did Outro music, but But yeah, like every. 
<laughs> there is like there's a joint like that for the, for every era. It's just that what's weird is in the last couple of years there hasn't been. I one. mean, even like, would well, you want to make a prediction? How about make a little for you know, look into that crystal ball. Mm. What could it be? Mm. Some bad bonnie. Ooh, some bad bonnie. That's what, yo, okay. Let me tell you about what <laughs> it's like to be in a, a DJ in the in the era of Pat, of Bad Bunny. Um, somehow in in recent in the last just year or two, the trend of like person in the crowd writing a a request on their iPhone oh, and holding it, it to you. Yeah, yeah. That became a lot more. I don't know if there's like how one, annoying is that? It's uh, like I'm again. So I'm very. So Diplo's like, like, please fuck me, and then for a track, it's like play Finito. It's like scratch, <laughs> scratch, scratch. <laughs> yeah, for me, it's like. Yeah, for me, it's like a. Uh, Where's Diplo? No, no, it's like play Lyricist Lounge Volume Two. Yeah. Um, Raucous Records had a fire run in '99. Exactly. <laughs> play Shabam Sadiq B side. Um, <laughs> R.A. the Rugged Man. Yes. <laughs> Um, I, I'm here for all of that. So uh, the new, no, but what I was going to say is I, I'm lucky that I don't really get too many requests, but requests for bad bunny through the roof are out of yeah, control. He's number one right it's, now. It's, it's, it's like, that's like that. That's, um, it's the spotted lantern fly of, right. of DJing. Oh, I think that's everywhere. Is it like, just him or is it also like no, Rosalia? And, and like, that's what, but here's, what's interesting. It makes me, it makes me wonder if there's a specific bad bunny song or if it's just like a vibe. Because I think yeah. that now that uh, we're like in the playlist era mm-hmm. and like people just go to like Bad Bunny Radio. Exactly. Like mm. albums don't really stick, songs don't really stick. For any month of the year, people have like a thing that they go to for whatever mood they're in. Yeah. And then like a month or two later, that thing gets replaced by something right. else. Right. Yeah. So, and you know, even like on some different shit, the Griselda shit, I think works well because. Those albums can can be replaced by the next Griselda album, mm-hmm. yeah. and then by the next one. Yeah. And I'm saying that as a compliment. Right, right, the, right. the level of curation is really dope. Mm-hmm. But like, you know, I'm bumping the Rome, the Rome Streets shit now. The way that maybe I was where like I playing see. the 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 West Side Gun, you know, B sides shit, right, right. you know, a year ago or whatever. So, um, so in this day and age, the in new- this day and age, people go to a vibe. Yeah. And I think that for a lot of people, Bad Bunny is a vibe. Yeah. It's not even necessarily Titi Me Pregunto or whatever is like right, the right, right. song, even though, although that's probably the most likely one. Um, but yo, like, the request. They want to tap into a mood. Yes. That he provides do you take, regardless. Exactly. Do you, do you listen to the requests? Do you take no, the requests? I'm a stubborn ass. <laughs> like, no. But again, I'm lucky that I don't get. But in 2022, the new Finito is Benito, which is Bad, <laughs> Bad Bunny's real name. Wow. God is ass, yes. dude. Hell I yeah. That. I had to Google that. Woo. Okay. Yeah. Um, your DJing started at an early age. You were child yeah. prodigy, world champion DJ when you're 15 years old. What was like the most normal 15 year old type shit that as this guy who was all of a sudden internationally famous, like you missed out on that you like really regretted the most? Um, I mean, just kind of just parties, man. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah but it's like funny because like high school parties. Exactly. Parties if you showed up at a party, they're like, yeah, they're yeah. like, yo, Alan's here. Like get him on the fucking ones and twos. Like, yeah. No, my my friends in high school didn't even know that I was winning oh, world really? championships until I was in the paper, and they were like, "What the fuck, bro?" And I what's happening? What's this? <laughs> the fuck? So they weren't like music friends. They were just like the no. They were know, my my, just the my yeah, and and I had like a great group of friends in 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 high school, but I hung out with Damn, them. Track you changed. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was just like you know we 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 hung out at school, and I would like I was kind of like the 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 nerdy kid that all that also pulled pranks like okay. i had like oh. i had like so everyone hated you yeah, the worst combination <laughs> my teachers kind of some okay. of my teachers hated me because i i had like i was maybe in the top two or three grades but then i would sit in the back Fuck of the class around, with yeah. like mm. the pranksters and just sure. like test my teacher's patience Fuck or, shit up. or just do like the same stupid puns that i still do on twitter to this day <laughs> that was me at age yeah, 10 or yeah. 11 <laughs> Like, like literally like figuring out something funny to say with like a molecule. Right. <laughs> oh, CH30. And well, how about. <laughs> and then. The, and oh, then, God, we hate this guy. Yeah. <laughs> H2O more like H2 blow me. Exactly. <laughs> yep. You then yep. studied physics in college. I did. I, I noticed that you, you included that yeah. in the intro. Do you think when Sir Isaac Newton said the greater the mass, the greater the force of attraction, he was talking about thick, juicy asses? <laughs> He, you know, I wouldn't put it past him. Yeah. That, I, uh, that Isaac. Yeah. yeah. Isaac was an ass man for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Unlike yes. fucking that boar motherfucker. Yeah. He had <laughs> apple bottom jeans on the mind. Yeah. When the apple hit him on the head. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Okay. 
Um, okay, so you obviously wear many hats from DJing, which we've talked a lot about, to production, to record label executive. What's the most gratifying work for you? Um, man, that you know th- that kind of evolved with time. That changed with time. I think for for a long time, DJing. I mean, look, DJing's always been. I think what I'm best at and what I'm most comfortable oh, you would, doing. Like that, you'll call your own shot with that. Yeah, that's the uh, superpower. Yeah, DJing is like what I'm like. So, what you were put on this earth to do? Kind of. <laughs> it's what I'm really a natural at, and right. like where I do certain things that are just me. You know. Yeah. And through time, I've figured out how to like do other things, whether it be produce and remix and run a label and put on other artists and and curate projects and even play a certain role in the you know cultural scene or whatever. Yeah. But then I'll go back to play a show and be like, yeah, this is what I'm good at. This is yeah, yeah. not I don't mean that in even a cocky way, but even in a sort of like yeah. again, I feel very fortunate to have like you feel this, at home doing that. Yeah, there's a thing that I can do. I can have like a horrible week and then go play a gig and be like yeah, I'm lucky to have this because like there's a level of immediate satisfaction right. sure. that I get from this thing that I'm that that I happen to know how to do. Um <clears throat> but like I think over time, um some of the like sharing a platform and like curating projects, thank you, projects with other artists, or just even helping certain artists get heard, or like signing something, signing a record just off of my gut reaction mm-hmm. and getting yeah, just as a fan. Yeah. Just on some, like this record's cool and weird. I want to yeah. put this out. And I like, I sign shit that makes me feel excited to send it to people on some right. like, yo, you got to hear this. I don't sign shit off of like, Oh, this will do well. Oh, this is going to stream. Yeah. <laughs> so, so maybe commercially I'm not the best label. I have, <laughs> I'm just on some, like, I just yeah. want to be excited. But that but that's, that it. must speak to the longevity of the label. Yeah. Possibly, yeah. And I the think, pureness that like people associate. I with would it. hope so, yeah. Cause it because it comes from, yeah, it comes from an earnest place and it comes from the same set of years. You and know, you're making it bigger thing. than just you. Like DJing is your thing. Yeah. Right. And obviously you share that with like hundreds of thousands, millions of people around the world. But as like the label exec, as the producer, as kind of like the incubator, you're making it so that you're spreading it so that it's bigger, much bigger than just a track. Yeah, yeah, actually, exactly. So, like, getting to a point in my career where now I have a voice in the platform and 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 just an opportunity to share things, whether it's records I put out or something like that. And when that connects, yeah, when there's someone that hits me, like even just the other day, getting a text from a, a DJ friend that I didn't expect to even hear a record, and having him be like, "Yo, that's fire!" That right, right, I just right. saw that someone retweeted this. It's dope. Mm. And I'm and and me being like, do you want me to send it to you? And, he, and and him saying, I actually just bought it. Like it's really dope. Like that. I love shit like that. I love doing Goldie Awards, the DJ battle, yep. the beat battle that I do. Because again, I'm like taking, you know, the art form that I came from and just putting it on a bigger yeah. stage. And um, but even now, like I'm I'm finishing up a documentary about DJing. Mm-hmm. Um, that's gonna be with uh, on Showtime with Sasha Jenkins and the Massabile team. And um, executive produced by myself and Quest Love Sick. and Vashti is the director. So they're like put together the team of like me, Sasha Jenkins, yeah. Quest Love, Vashti. Doing that curation that like, you know. Yeah. And also telling the story of shit that I'm passionate about right. and, and just being psyched. Like, wow, I have an actual like three part movie that's going to yeah. come out yeah. in a few months. And I get to make sure that the story of hip hop DJing Gets is told, told the way yeah. that I want it yeah. to be told. Right. Like that's shit that's really exciting yeah. to me, you know, and, and, and kind of using the um the sort of vantage point that i'm in where i'm like yo i actually i know grandmaster flash (laughs) but i know those like 10 year old kids that are scratching on instagram now right right, you know and and to be able to the generational bridge yes the connective tissue yeah as as it were as as the label executive at fool's gold who was the biggest artist you missed out on signing yeah you're like, oh, I don't know about this yeet guy. Talking man. about your, like, your your vantage point and like you know your the platform. When it, who, who, who I, 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 swing and miss I, on. I, I missed out on Kechanada. Oh, uh-huh. bro! Damn. Back when he was called Kecho Damas. <laughs> <laughs> that was his name. You're Remember? like the name's bad. I don't well, know. Like, do you know my friends Floster Damas? Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> um, he's a fucking biter. Damn, yeah, I, on Ketra? I missed out on Kecho, but shout out to him and shout out to what he's doing for Montreal, my hometown. Um, he's fucking fire. Yeah, I even I mentioned Hudmo earlier, and he's still a really good friend. But I, I Hudson Mohawk did pass me a a, oh. a demo CDR. Oh no, I didn't Dude. really do anything with it. But, Damn, but you know he, he should have gone MP3. I'm sure that the way that he went, like the path he went on, is probably best for him. Um, Any rappers that we would know of? 
Because you've had rappers cra- I tried to sign and I didn't have the bank or Fool's Gold didn't have the bank account to sign. Because you've had crazy rappers on the roster. Yeah, and I appreciate it. Yeah. For, Who's from- the biggest mainstream maybe you went after that maybe did, didn't work out? Because yeah. like the other labels just outbid you or whatever. Uh, Rocky. <laughs> oh, okay. There you go. Damn. Yeah. You know, definitely tried to sign Rocky in the early days. Did you try to sign, ever sign Travis Scott? Because I saw him at a Fool's Gold Day Off before well, so, he blew. Right. So Travis, a lot of people will tell me now that his performances at Day Off, both LA and New York, yeah. and actually over a couple of years, there's many people who will tell me that that's how they found out about him. But but he was already signed, kind to, of like, a, a, a signed a few ways. Uh, to, yeah, that's what happened. to Grand Hustle. The Grand Hustle, yeah. Was, that's what happens with industry plants, you yeah. know? Oh, <laughs> no, no, hey, no comment. <laughs> Spicy. Um, Rocky was an early fool's gold day out motherfucker yeah. too, right? Yeah, for sure, for sure. When we booked Juicy J, when, when Juicy J was just putting out those mixtapes with Lex, Lex Luger, the whole ASAP crew came to day off and just kind of like jumped on stage with him. Fire. Um, but yeah, Travis was already signed to, to both Grand Hustle and some form of good music affiliation early on. Yeah. Cause this guy, Anthony Kilhoffer, who's one of yeah. Kanye's mix yeah. engineers. Yeah. All timer. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Shout out to Kilhoffer. Um, had already Legend. signed him. Yeah. Damn. So, so there's definitely like a couple of artists who came up with the day off mm-hmm. generation, day off events. Um, but, uh, yeah. And who's, who's, who's a musician that you, cause you've worked with so many yeah. and we talked about the generational divide, like whether it's, you know, the OGs or the young kids coming up, who's a musician that you haven't yet worked with that you would love to Ooh. link and build with <laughs> link and build. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I get that asked that question sometimes. Have you worked like, with everybody? Yeah. No. Right? Is there anyone left? <laughs> no, no, no. I, I guess yeet. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go buy a face a face mask. Yeah, a ball Shiesty. Of <laughs> but yeah, um, no. There's plenty of there's plenty of uh, artists I haven't worked with uh, from you know Ghostface Ooh, to I face. mean, dude, if I could do something with Nas or whoever, obviously yeah, yeah. I would jump at that. But like sometimes you know it might just be some 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 underground shit that I'm feeling that that um, yeah. Yo, when when. Uh, when when Jid when JID was first starting the bubble, he and mm. I were talking about doing an EP together. Oh shit! And um and we like even like started one one song, and then he like went on tour. Uh, you know Cole had like him and Earth Gang. Yeah. Opening for him overseas for like months and months and months, and he'd be like, "Yo, as soon as I get back, we're gonna lock in." Like there's shit like that that I, that never ended up happening. What's some other crazy shit that's in the vault that you can divulge that like we'll never hear, but like. Um, I mean, yo, I have a prodigy verse on the Duck Sauce track that, that, that God will damn. never come out. But like one of his last verses. Yeah, uh, that. But shit, we'll never we'll never hear that. Yeah, nah, That's just because it was just like and it ended up just being being some some fun shit. Like it was just like that's I'll, a crazy level of just fun shit. Exactly, but just <laughs> to be like him being like, yo, come to the studio, let's try it. Because um, yeah, there was one song on the on the Duck Sauce Quack album where um. We we th- we thought like just for fun, let's try to get someone to rap on this, um, and you know, you gotta uh, aim high. You gotta aim. Yeah, high. yo, like, no, but literally, like, yo, there's a lot of shit. That, alive th- there's a lot of shit that I do that's just me and my bro being like, let's do some shit that that we'll geek out. Over. Right, right, like, right. Just some what what what's gonna make us happy? That's the right? driving ethos. It yeah. sounds like in all you the make, track and you fool's make gold. music and art for yourself, which is like kind of the <laughs> mark of a great artist, right? To yeah. some degree. I guess. Yeah, versus, that's one way to versus do it. Versus pandering versus like, you know. I know yeah, I, I, I don't know Marvel how to movie. pander. I, you no, know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to pander. I'll just do some shit that, that I think is ill and that hopefully other people. Like, mm. truly on some like, if I'm geeked over this, hopefully there's enough other hopefully people out catches. there yeah. that are geeked over this and then it builds a thing. But yeah, it ended up being P just saying like, yo, come over to the stew. You know, I think Alchemist had connected us and and it was kind of, yeah, it was on some like, yo, the homie vouch for you. Like, <laughs> And we You're ended valid. Up, yeah, we ended yeah. up becoming friends. And from that- Burrified. Yo, um, you know, I remember like seeing P like maybe two years later and him be like, yo, what's up, A-Track? Like just- Oh, like, shit. Yo, we, we, we yeah. kicked That's it. cool. Yeah, so just to build a friendship off of that, like he recorded a quick thing on the song, but we're, we ended up just kind of hanging out. Right. You know? So, Who's probably even like more valuable. Exactly. Yeah. Like I, I have- Those memories. From a selfish standpoint, you no, know? for but sure, Put man, that in the mental vault. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. In the the DJ nerd spank bank. Yeah, a hundred percent. Um, something you made that did quite catch on with mm. quite a few people was uh Barbara Streisand. Yeah. Did she ever reach out when that song was going crazy? So <laughs> top on the remix. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> get a verse from her. Um, drop a sixteen from Barb's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Barb's. Get the real. 16. Yeah, get the real Barb's yeah, bad, going on Twitter. Drop it. Yeah. Right. Um, so the funny thing that happened when that song took off was that at first we wanted to know if she had heard it. Mm. And there was like, I remember like Billboard even ran an article like, oh, let's talk about this song. And has Barbra Streisand heard it? We're like, we're trying to find yeah. out. But, you know, she's, I can get yeah, to a so lot Billboard of people. Billboard already asked this question. <laughs> you get to a lot of people, you can't get to Barbara. Though. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I can yeah, get yeah. to a lot of people. I she's can't insulated. quite get to Barbra Streisand. And no one could really get to her for like a year or so. And then something happened like kind of exactly a year after the song came out where it Word came to me. The prophecy was fulfilled. From like two or three different people where yeah. word came back. She, she was, was like, like you're, gonna, you're gonna be sued. <laughs> no, no, it was like she she likes the song. Oh shit. She likes the song. I mean, and it was so big that she must have heard yeah, it while right? like, like shopping like, in no, the No, but then it got to a point where like what it, like that year, like a year or two after the song really popped, she did a tour. And there was like an intermission in the middle of the tour. Oh shit! And oh, and fuck. and yes, the PA was playing the That's song. That's sick. And that so that would come back to me like right. a few times. Right. Yo, I'm at the Barbara Streisand song <laughs> show. They're playing your song between in, in between, between the sex. acts. Yeah, or, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's yeah. fucking fired. Dude. Yeah. Who was at the Barbara Streisand still, concert? Like your parents? Like were they like? More people yeah. than I'd be like, you're, <laughs> you're, you're at, yeah, yeah. You're at the show. Um, but I still haven't met her. Mm. Yes, we we gotta get, well, if she listens to the podcast, Barb. Yeah, she's 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 in the comments. She's in the YouTube comments. Yeah. Um, what are the, do you still get crazy, like streaming checks from ducks from Barbara Streisand? Yo, that, that sample took a lot. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, you're in the red. <laughs> no, but, but it's funny. Like some, he's earning it back. Like the other song, the other song that's a, you know, big contender for me is, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. has roll remix. Oh sure. And a lot of people don't realize that a remix has worked for hire. I don't even have a percentage on that. That Damn. was a one-time check right. in 2009. And then most people heard it on the movie Project X. I know, a dude, all timer. But that was like a year or two later. And that you don't gave get it like you don't get a movie licensing fee or anything. Damn, that's the Interscope Records. That's like Fuck that's up. their master. They paid me once, mm, yeah. but it's a calling card. Not, and not to gas you up, but it's better than the original. And obviously, Project X made it seem like even it, fucking. Better. It put it in context. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's kind of like a. Um, right, so, so you haven't hung out with Barbara yet. <laughs> no. You've played. You've gotten smoked on the ping pong table by Dane Dash. Although you. Uh, did beat Cam, um, and credit. you love hanging out with Prodigy. Who's like, who are your favorite rappers to hang out with? Uh, you just kick it with like between sessions, like you know, you're not mad that they're, you know, no one's getting any work done. Like, who do you like just to chill with? Let's see. Whether it's at the studio, whether it's at the festivals, yeah. traveling the world, just getting a bite with. Ferg is really the homie. Oh, yeah. dude, what a sweetheart! Right? Yeah, we yeah. got Can we get? Can we get him on the podcast? Yeah, I'm sure you could. I can. I can try to. If you take a piss, you'll see uh, his grill just uh, yeah, hanging yeah, on my back bathroom, wall. Yeah. Shout out Fergenstein, bro. <laughs> yeah, Ferg's really Fergie. the homie. Um, I mean, the locks are lovely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> really nice. Really, <laughs> all three of them. Like Styles is really the homie. He's, we, the, he's the juice bar, right? Yeah. You must go up there and like we, have a ginger shot. We interviewed uh, Wiki from Rat King, and That's he said that the locks, in his opinion, is the perfect rap group of all time. You know, with, every, with how every what, what they all bring to the table. Yep. Which um, like it's hard to argue with. I still really enjoy hanging with Danny Brown. Danny oh, fucking bro. cracks me up. Did you listen to his episode? <laughs> no. He came sure. through. We listened yeah. to new music. Okay. He had some mezcal. We had some wine. It was Rats. incredible. So Hilarious. The new, the new music sounds so good. Yeah. Have you heard any new wait. stuff yet? Not even slaps, bro. Dart, you're so, slipping, bro. Yeah, come uh, on, sorry, dude. guys. <laughs> I'm signed to Warped Records now, but um, I feel like Danny's the, the every like everyone's answer to this, right? He's just yeah, the nah, fucking he's, man. He's dude. the best. Juicy J is great. Oh, Yo, God. Bun. I'm surprised your lifestyles mesh. Are you and Juicy J? Yo, you know what? He was surprised. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Juicy J and I did a song together a long time ago called Piss Test. Yeah, of course. With he, Danny, with yeah. Danny fuck as a well. PO. Yeah, yes. classic. Piss Thank you. Test. So, so Juicy J shows up with a hell of a lot of weed, and he starts rolling up and smoking, and like. Blunt my, after blunt after motherfucking yeah. blunt. Sorry, I'll stop and, rapping. And, and, and my friend who was like the camera guy that came with me starts smoking with him too. And and oh, he's smoking the Juicy J strain though. Oh, dude, he Oof. must have been on his ass. And then he looks at me. He's like, "Don't you? You don't smoke?" I'm like, "Nah." Like, don't. Did you used to smoke? And I've known him for a long time because even back in the day, um, I did some shit with him and GLC okay. on some good music shit. Right, so right, I've right. known him since those since like yeah. those years, like 2006 or something. Um. And he's like, didn't you, did you used to smoke? No, never smoked in my life. And he thought for a second, he goes, you fit right in with the stoners. <laughs> <laughs> he just assumed that you were some weird fucking yep. blazed out nah, dude. Bun is really the homie. Um, oh, nice. Shit, dude. 
Now you're just, now you're but, just flexing on us. You're just, you're just naming nice guys. He's Who's the most famous person on your phone then? I got to know. I don't know. Bar- don't know. Barbara Streisand? Pharrell. <laughs> Barack Obama? Pharrell? Okay, that's fine. Are you going to bid on any Pharrell jewelry? <laughs> yeah. Am so I going to bid on the, yeah. the, 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 the gold Blackberry? Yeah. Maybe not. <laughs> Not in your price range. Yeah. We need to start seeing some more. Bar- you need another Barbara Streisand yeah. on your belt before you can afford a <laughs> skateboard P chain. <laughs> um, okay. So you've been fucking in music since you're 15 decades. Yeah. Now, mm. what has been the top? Yes. I'm trying to think like, yo, there's probably like some unexpected people that I know even aside from rappers. But yeah, go ahead. Sorry. We have like hey, Obama f- on your phone or some f- shit. I mean, like- again, feel free to. Yeah. Do you want to <laughs> Justin Thoreau? Like, <laughs> yeah. no, I don't know. I don't know. I don't okay. Know. All right. <laughs> Who so oh, what's geez. your what's your top personal highlight of your entire music career? Like when you look back, you're just like that was the peak. <laughs> Man, <laughs> it's um, all downhill from here. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, t- to me, there's kind of uh to me, there's kind of like two or two uh, like two kind of bigger moments. So one A, you know? one B. Yeah, like winning the DMC battle. Because mm. that set that set everything in motion. Man. That yo, to this day, I'll have People come up to me and be like, I learned, I started DJing because I saw that tape. And that's deep, man. Like, that's, yeah. you, you changed my life. But it's just like, that's, it trips me out. And like, saw the shit on even when I, world. <laughs> wow. LaFlame, wow. Didn't save, LaFlame didn't save their life. Yeah. <laughs> no, but even like after winning that first battle, I spent a couple other years winning other battles. And like, it's a trip because I got better right after that. Hmm. So in those years, I'd be like, Nah, but I need to win something else because my new shit is Your body is changing, bro. You're like, my fingers are growing. Right, yeah. With my lower vocal register. My balls drop. I can scratch with them now. (laughs) There's things I can do with my chest hair. Um, (laughs) Added flexibility. Yeah, yeah. Um, So back then, I was kind of on some like, nah, 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 but my new shit. And and, and people would still be like, 1997 DMC world Mm -hmm. champion. And for a while, I was like, Yo, but did you see my 99 yeah. shit? Bro? Yeah, yeah. They're like, nah, nah. And like, there's a point it where. It's world yet. Still <laughs> but, uploading. <laughs> right, right. There's a point where I was able to look back at some of those videos. And like, even just in recent years, I finally got to a place where I can see myself how other people saw me. <laughs> like, I can, I can, I watch me and I'm sort of like, like damn, who's that fired. kid? And yeah, and now I <laughs> like finally. He's, get, oh, like, he's nice. Yeah, kind of on some like, oh, I get it. Okay. This, like, mm. th- this is kind of a trip. Like, this right, is yeah. kind of a trip more than I even realized. So that is definitely one. But to me, you know, 06, 07, 08, like, or even just, no, I don't know. Not, <laughs> like the early Fool's Gold years from like the tail end of what I did with Kanye to um, to like, you know, putting on Cuddy day and night. Right. Mm. You know, Duck Sauce, Barbara Streisand, just like showing up. Like Barbara Streisand was crazy. Yeah. Man. Like. People you guys another, ran this city. People yeah. in other Honestly, cities were had the city in a fucking chokehold, bro. Let's be real. Appreciate it. And but we kind of you know, yeah, we came in at a point in time where we were between generations and we're like, yo, let's just put on shows. And yeah. like yeah. no one was doing festivals. Right. We, we, we I could just like hit hit up rappers, be like, yo, do you want to come to New York and play a show? And they weren't really booking getting booked at shows in New yeah. York. There was no rolling loud yet. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. No, it was we were like, what's after- Williamsburg? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. We were after Rock Where the Bells. At? After Rock the Bells and before um before Rolling Loud. Um yeah. so that that run uh, and Barbara Streisand you when, fill that when, lane. when people yeah. in other cities were doing their version of the whole video. Oh. Like there'd be like someone in Paris filming the landmarks of Paris and yeah. saying Paris, France. Of our, <laughs> and then you had someone in like Warsaw, Poland doing yeah. that. And someone, you, you know, took, bef- you took the, the duck sauce was you taken. Took, you took the duck sauce <laughs> to Poland. Exactly. Before the walk was taken, I we took, took the duck sauce. <laughs> yes. We almost had it. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. You know. So that, and that was like early virality. That was like viral before yeah. viral was a fucking it was thing. A, the I song mean, was a meme, bro. Like, let's be real. It's, it's, yeah. Straight up, the Barbara Streisand video was kind of the first viral uh, EDM or dance Absolutely. video. Absolutely. Um, before the predates Harlem Shake. Yeah, it was yeah. it was like a year before. Fuck you, show. Bauer. No, that's that's <laughs> truly my friend. <laughs> Who's making music right now that that is really exciting? You like who do you have your eye on? Man, um, a lot of shit from from you know obviously on the Fool's Gold side, Chris Crack is is you know I'm a big Chris believer. Crack. That's yeah. a fire name. Yeah. Chris Crack from Chicago. He's look him up. He puts out a ton of albums. Has the he's best. Prolific. He's prolific. He has the best song titles in the game. <laughs> what are some far. examples? Like, what are your favorites? What are you listening to right now? Uh, of his songs? Yeah, yeah. What are, that are like the examples. best titles. 
I mean, he's got a song called Hose at, Pre- uh, Hose at Trader Joe's. Fire. Very <laughs> okay. fire. All right. Yeah. Um, All right. V- valid. Just, but, he's, but, playing to, he's playing to the inner child in you that just loves like punts. Yes. Yes. That's why he signed him. Yeah, exactly. Um, he's he's got this. no. He's got a song called Trill is an Onomatopoeia. Wow. <laughs> he's got a great song. Too type. real. Um, so, but, you know, I'm... I, I, king like, of the living room. King of the living I'm room. Just Googling. Great song. Yes. <laughs> False evidence appearing real. Okay, so yeah, this dude is yeah. just tweeting in his song title. Pretty much. Yeah. Wow, what a pretty king. much. <laughs> um, and I uh, mentioned Rome Streets. That's the homie. I, I love his record too. Um, I love the Arctic Monkeys new album. Oh, Ooh, really? I I adore that album. But I also I've love, seen some kind of like mixed reviews. But you know. uh, what about the no, new? No, no. Are we gonna get a? Are you gonna remix the new Yeah Yeah Yes? Well, you know it's funny. Sometimes that stuff comes up. Like like um. I got asked to remix uh, something off the new Phoenix album. Phoenix are one of my favorite bands. Yeah. But I did a remix for them a long time ago and like the check never cleared. No, <laughs> no, no. Uh, so much love to them. They're really one of my favorite bands, but like it's hard to do a second remix for a band, especially a band I oh, really right. love. Oh, interesting. Because right. I'm kind of like, yo, I put my all in that first one. Sure. And I don't want to do another one. And it's when they were more good. famous. <laughs> it's I'm just kidding. like, I don't want to make something that's not as good as like, yeah, yeah. what I really. Damn, that's interesting. You don't want to. It's hard for you to tread that old ground because like I, you're like, I left it all out on the field. Yo, I. I that's like, crazy. I deliver remixes very late because I, I put a lot of love <laughs> Again, and energy into tinker. it. Yes, I'm a tinkerer. And then once that's done, I'm sort of like, yo, this is my present to you. Yeah. I don't even go. care how much people pay me. I make money DJing and whatever else. Yeah. Also, um, it's like, wait, what's the, what's the average bag of like a of like a DJ gig? Yeah. What are you talking? I don't really talk fees. Okay. okay. We'll but, really get to the money section. We right. Really <laughs> yeah. That's um, not a joke. What I'm asking now, like, yo, it's um, right here. You're like, oh, so uh, chapter four. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Caribou has an alias for for house shit that's called Daphne. Okay. D a p h n i. The Daphne album that just came out is like yes. probably yeah, album of the year. Shit, that's my shit for this year. Better than Taylor Swift, Midnight's. <laughs> Come on, bro. Are you um, a Taylor guy or, or a CRJ guy? Yeah, Carly Rae Jepsen. If you're nasty, she's Canadian. CRJ yeah. over Taylor Swift for sure. Yeah. yeah. All right, yeah, there it is. She's pretty, you know, pretty solid. Yeah. No dedicated, mm-hmm. but you know. Anyway, she's funky. All right, you got. I mean, the the taste eclectic, but yeah. the taste is also consistent, mm-hmm. which brings me to my next question. Okay. This is the question everybody wants to know. You wasn't there, best album of the year. A <laughs> track. Yes. How many leather jackets do you own? Oh, you know what's interesting? Um, I get rid of some of my shit over time. We did so that grilled sale. Yes, we did a grilled. You sale. sold a few. Yep. Um, I don't even know how many I have now. There's a point where I had. How many have you bunch. owned in your lifetime? If you had to speculate, over a thousand. Some total. No. No, a thousand. No, no, maybe twenty. I don't know. No, come on, dude. Yeah. That's a fucking lie. In that range. And okay. these are what, like, like, like Saint Laurent, YSL, and like yeah. shot it, and like it Dior Homme. It was Dior Homme when Eddie was over there. I went from Dior Homme, Saint Laurent, a little bit of Balmain. When at one point before <laughs> before Tyga got to that, um, <laughs> when, Ball, when Balmain Tyga. was Balmain, and yeah, <laughs> all um, zippers matter. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had this like all white. Uh, ball my leather that was dope no it was like white and black are you fucking with celine now because like obviously like you both you and dave are eddie acolytes right yeah yeah for sure so so i i'll I'll get some celine shit but i'll just try to get the thing that is not that like you're not gonna see on like on the basketball player sure right i get it the casual walk you know the 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 tunnel fit the tunnel yeah Yeah. exactly how many leather jacks you do you own now at this point now Now? because i don't even really wear leather jackets in in my current uh, uh, the current era iteration. So now I probably have like five. Okay. Or something. Again, so including four, vests. Four too including many. Vests, including vests. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> With or without sleeves, <laughs> maybe five. But all in all over time, yeah, maybe. Wait, who was 20. it? Jadakiss said in the leather jacket without the sleeves, like, yeah, that's a vest. Yeah, that's a vest. <laughs> <laughs> What's the one piece of clothing now in your current iteration that you wear the most? Because the leather jacket was very much that like a look. your look. Yeah. Now, now what are we doing? Yeah, what's getting the most run, dude? Whether it's like you know promotional picks or these like vans or outside just on or stage. I mean, there's no signature piece. There's got to be. I mean, Not even signature, but just whatever you're yeah. wearing, you find yourself wearing the most. Like I'll just I'll I'll just wear like some like a camo sort of shell or something. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you yeah. for your service, by the way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Are you excited for fall now? You can really start dressing because you can't be wearing these leather jackets and camo, shell. I, but, camo but, shells out. Yeah, in LA, but, but just to like to answer your question differently, there's <laughs> he's tinkering uh, right now, folks. No, I'm, yeah, I'm <laughs> thinking about tinkering. it. Like, there's 
there's a number of things within a category that I'll wear a lot. Like okay. they'll they'll be like they'll be like flashy sweaters uh-huh. or they'll be like uh you know hairy jeans a mohair cardigan <laughs> but it might not just be one yeah yeah no i get it you know oh, what so I mean? you like find a category or something that's and you just go deep and they'll get like many and like i've been saying for a few years that we're in an era of interesting pants like <laughs> so oh for have, sure. you know what i mean so it's like it's the interesting pants category yeah, yeah. it's the big chunky sweater it's mm-hmm. the it's the camo shell over uh this or right that. Like right, right. That, that sort of thing besides these marty jeans what other interesting pants are you oh man with i got now? a couple interesting pants let's talk uh, pants <laughs> Um, man, I just found these, like, I got these pants that like fade colors. Like it's like from purple. It's like an ombre or whatever. Yeah. Or? Yeah. And those are fun. What brand does those? those? Uh, dude, bonus fit dude, checking. I, I'm, by the way, I forget a lot of like. He's just, gatekeeping. Don't listen to me. <laughs> no, I'll tell you. I, those might also be Marnie though. They sound like they could be a yeah. Marnie type, <laughs> type John. Yeah. 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 Like at the end of the day, like I'll wear a, a lot of acne. Okay. It feels like a DJ brand for sure. I guess. Yeah. You know, in the sense that like they wear shit that I can wear while I yeah. DJ, you know? Okay. There'll when be you, some Dries shit. There'll be some, the, acne, maybe the some JW Anderson fans. Mafia. I have I got, I got, like these kind of quite white legged striped JW Anderson pants. Oh, really the like. king. You know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Now that uh, some trends are looking back to like the years that you mentioned, whether it is like the late nineties or, yeah. or like the early the first half of the aught, the naughty oddies, like, yeah. Are you stoked to get back to your fucking indie sleaze Y two K shit? Or are you just like, that was terrible. Yeah, let's well, not okay, repeat. So, but the even mistakes be- of the past before the nostalgia actually makes it to to, to two thousand five. Before I get, before I go and get the Oakley frog skins out of, <laughs> out of the closet. Um, <laughs> even just in recent years, there's a point where I feel like I just went back to dressing how I did in 1998, 1999 in okay. terms of like, like fit in terms of like, like yeah. In terms of the or, silhouette okay, of just the beastie boys silhouette or big whatever. pants, like, vans and a, exactly. And drapey sweater. Exactly. Big pants, sambas or vans and like a camouflage jacket that could either be Maharishi in 1999. Right. Or some 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 new Danish shit that right. just came out yeah, now, yeah, yeah, yeah. but they're just copying. New that camo stuff. just dropped. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like I like in already the last few years, I feel like I've gone back to dressing like like a drum and bass DJ from ninety <laughs> from like two thousand. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or like somewhere between yeah, somewhere between James Lavelle game. and like you know Liam from Oasis. You got dressed with a little bit of Stussy Beastie, yeah, yeah, a, yeah, a grimy yeah. club rat. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yes. Is there looking back? Is there a personal style phase? Like obviously you're kind of like tapping back in your past, but is there a personal style phase you went through that you now regret the most? I mean, is it the patterns in the hair? <laughs> no, no. I'm I'm glad. I, it's I'm, like I'm last year. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um. No, there, well, there's shit that's funny. Right. What's that? You know? So like. You can clearly laugh at it. What's the funny shit? Yes. Like early, like 2002 or so, I definitely owned many pairs of academics jeans. I hate <laughs> the fact that like academics, even spelled the way it is with the K yeah, or whatever, bro. is now. DJ, a, DJ at. Yeah. Is, is I, that guy? I hate that. Because yeah. if it's, you say academics, people think you're like, wait, yeah, you wore yeah. academics merch in like 02? It's, it's like, like no, no, this is like the Echo the, era. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like a skate brand. They yeah. were like, it's like kind of like well, I, bridge the they're gap more between like, hood they're and more skate. Like, they're more like, like urban. Yeah. Yeah. They were sort of in the Pele Pele uh, mm. Mecca category. Like LRG type of like I'm, not. But again, I, I, was well, LR, in the, I was in an LRG ad. Uh, really? <laughs> with a big belt buckle. Find this photo. Yeah. yeah, yeah you can find it. I was in an LRG ad with a big belt buckle. Fuck yeah, dude. Um, no, but there was a point in time where I definitely had a couple of Sean John, you know, velour track suits oh. and some terry cloth like polos and 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 like tall boy shorts like long shorts um like that, that's swaggy the, adam sandler shit man but that was but that was the look at the time right? yeah like that's that's the era that's funny to me is like the sort of ti tilted oh. uh, hat defying the laws of physics yo I, yo I had i had mitchell and ness jerseys so so yeah <laughs> oh wow so like, like what down to your calves pretty much pretty much so, so and like the soldier boy shorts like the no not <laughs> quite not quite but but mitchell and ness jerseys academics jeans um and 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 some sean john shit like i'm i'm actually proud that i went through a phase you're proud of, of your cultural yes. appropriation yeah <laughs> well, no, hey I gave, why do we are the you are part of the culture so you earned it yeah. that's like your pass is you get yeah. to wear a mitchell and nester's as a white man but not on that tip though i never got fronts sure. i never i never no, tried to you. like look like a no. hood dude or whatever yeah. i just 
had Sean John. Did you keep all that shit? Did he did he keep all that shit? Do you still have like fucking babesters and like Yeah, are you a hoarder? Half depends what. Yeah. Depends what. I don't think I kept my Sean John sweatsuits. That's a shame. (laughs) But shit that I've had over the years, either whether it be like um, you know, like the archives of Fool's Gold stuff that we made. Or like maybe something that I wore at like a specific event that I might want to remember. Like sentimental. Uh, bro, I yeah. saw you the Danny Gold XXX uh, t-shirt with like the eyes. Well, we reprinted those. Oh, you reprinted yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fool's Gold uh, currently sells that t-shirt. Fire. Oh, but um, yeah, there's some shit that I keep or like, you know, like uh, I don't like when I went through my sneaker phase because I haven't cared about sneakers for 10 plus years. But when I went through the phase of getting like a shit ton of dunks and having like you know, whatever babes and whatever yeah. colorway. Like I've kept a few of those. Okay. What would you do with the sneakers when you stopped caring? Like do you sell them or just give them away? Yeah. Um, I, no, I never, I, I, I've rarely ever sold clothes. Like I, except for that grill shit. Yeah. Yeah. But that was <laughs> the one time that I did that. That like, was a, that was a after years project. and years of like giving away Dior jackets to like, yeah. <laughs> the kids that worked at the fool's gold store. Like, yeah. Hey, you want a jacket? Yeah. <laughs> and then one point being like, wait, I spent five this is financially, dollars. Jesus on this. Christ. this is financially this is irresponsible. That kids rent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but All I'm right. glad I did that. Um, no, I, I, I gave a lot of shit away. Yeah. yeah. Track, it, is, the people. it is time to move into the next segment of the podcast. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Everyone's favorite. It is time for, Dead ass. Okay. That's it's sucking and fucking meats and cheeks, baby. Yeah. <laughs> we ask this of every musician. All yeah. right. Do you listen to your own music when you have sex? Hell no. <laughs> You're not. It's not fuck sauce. <laughs> Yo, not, daddy but, made some fuck sauce. Yo, duck sauce. When you look at it on a keyboard, is really funny because if you just change one letter, oh, it's right yep, there. It's right it could, there. It could Confirmed. be. It could be dick sauce. Oh. It could be fuck sauce. It could be suck sauce. Like it's all right. It's right there. It's one it's type all the of dick Damn. sauce. <laughs> Were you like, trying to name the duo of fuck sauce? You just it was a typo. Yeah, it was already taken. Yeah. <laughs> um, who gets more ass, the rappers or? Electronic music artists. Ooh, I don't know, man. If you have uh, to speculate, and let's let's talk quantity and then quality. <laughs> that you know what? That's probably the right way to think about it. Oh, okay. I will say that both belong to rappers. I will say that the rap rappers probably get more quantity. Mm. Okay, but but DJs might go on the oh yeah the quality, quality side. I mean, yeah. I'm being nice to DJs, right? Now. Oh, yeah. yeah you know, oh, I was yeah. going to say, damn, this is generous as yeah. fuck, bro. There's a reason why they're behind the ones and twos. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> a lot of the times. Not mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. Not you. Um, of all the artists you spend time with, who gets the most ass and or dick? <laughs> yeah. Who's like a Lothario Who's or a down? Lothario? Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. That's uh, a punt. All right. And here, I'm here's, 40 years old. <laughs> here's, here's a real question. Yeah. <laughs> What's the way to a track's heart? Ooh. Oh. Yeah. Let's get romantic. Yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, intelligence. Like, I, 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 I need to, like, if I'm really gonna be with someone, I, I need to have an intel, like, an intellectually stimulating conversation there. Mm. Does their taste in music matter? What if they? What if it sucks? <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> but, but, but no, that would be. I don't know. Like so bad, it's good. That would be interesting. Okay. Like I've never dated a fish fan. Like, I don't, <laughs> like, but maybe at one point I might have to be like, you know what? Yeah. I'm trying to show her my string cheese. <laughs> yeah. Hey, sure, babe. Throw that 18 minute banger. <laughs> yeah. So that's where you draw the line is jam bands. But other than that, you're like, okay. I'm just saying I haven't gone there. Okay. Mm. Um, <laughs> Not yet. Maybe there's a hygiene concern now. <laughs> um, hey, what? Wait, yeah. who's, who's, I didn't say that. <laughs> Looking like um, those jeans, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Musical taste, I will say, like, it's it's fun when that's when when like that's, common ground when you can connect, yeah connect yeah that. for sure it's fun when there's like a but, stimulating but conversation. Can anyone put you on to anything at this point? For sure, okay, there's plenty right. of shit I don't know, and it's also cool when the like I'm not trying to find someone that has the same taste as me. It's, it's oh, right, also right, cool right. To, to be like, yo, let's you know check out the song, and for the other person, for the girl, to be like, um. I kind of hate this. Can I tell you? <laughs> like that's this heads will roll remix sucks. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. I hated Project um, bitch, yeah, Bar- This Barbara Streisand paid for dinner. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which, yeah. A track, how much money do you make? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> Are we counting in, in Pringles or? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. If that's how, how is that? What, oh, that's, <laughs> the, that's the currency in Canada, right? Yeah, exactly. Loonies yes. and Pringles. Yeah. Loonies, Loonies and Toonies, baby. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't, I don't talk. I okay. What say is, that your celebrity net worth? We were just fucking around waiting for you because you were a little bit late. You were on rapper time. Was, $12 yes. million. Dollars. So congratulations, dude. That's news to me. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, okay. What do you like to spend your hard earned? I need hard- to audit somebody. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> besides, besides like designer clothing, what do you like to spend your hard earned money on? Um, man. Honestly, is it like rare drum machines? No, I was gonna records? say, like, I don't really have like a thing that I spend a lot of money on. Like, How big is your record collection? I have a record collection story for you, actually. Okay, oh, and I go. and I think I have about 5,000 records, but I'll tell you why I think. And just a couple more than your leather jackets, <laughs> yeah, name exactly. them all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 5, I'm gonna 000? sit here and watch you. Are they yeah. split between LA That's and New York? That's the story. Oh, okay, and you and then no, the the, the sorry, I'm too good at my thing. job. <laughs> I moved from Montreal to New York in 2006, kind of on a whim. And so I, my, I already had like 5,000 records in Montreal because that was like I spent 10 years into a DJ career. Sure, yeah. And those were the years where I was learning how to dig for samples. And that was before Serato was like, oh shit, I yeah. need everything. I need doubles of, of, of every, you know, every breakbeat, right? Yeah. Moved to New York on a whim. So I put my shit in storage. Then I'm living in New York apartments. You're not gonna bring a couple like thousand shit holes. I'm sure it's fine, okay, but like, right. <laughs> but like, there's no room in the Williamsburg the apartments for. Champion, right? Yeah, exactly. Come on. Excuse yeah. me. You had that um, song with the uh, with the B- Dipset B team, <laughs> right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> shout out to those guys again. It was burning we, up. Shout out clubs. Dat Piff. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, so I I didn't bring my records to New York for a long ass time because there's they're just showing at home. Yes, yeah, like the, I'm in an apartment in New York. Right. And so then, you know, years go by, I go on tour. And, but by then, like, I learn how to, like, produce on a laptop mm-hmm. and use whatever. And then, like, Free you know, and a track went digital. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Bobby. <laughs> um, and, and I'm DJing on, you know, Serato, producing yeah. on The computers were Putin. Yeah. Putin, exactly. Full swing Putin. <laughs> so I didn't really, I didn't really need, like, fully, like, room full of servers people. right um i didn't even really need my records anymore like it to, to a point where it's almost a challenge to myself like i'm let, right. let me make sure i can make tracks without le- let me do it without records. the real shit years go by then i get a the crib in la in around 2015 but by then i'm i'm like living half in new york half in or really like mostly on tour but yeah. sometimes in new york sometimes in la everything's going fast i never grab my records from montreal until the pandemic Really? Because they were just chilling? They were just like chilling. Your, like your, at your parents' house? At or? P-Thug's garage. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to P-Thug. Damn, dude. Oh, he P-Thug. held it down for you. He held like it down. thousands of records yes. in his garage. But who's counting? Yeah. <laughs> P-Thug. And, P- P-Thug is. Yeah, P- P-Thug is anyone who lives with him who's trying to park their 5,117 <laughs> records in my garage. Yeah. So finally, during the pando, I was like, you I know what? I'm going to get these records. And... um, uh. It took a while to like. I was gonna say that took so fourteen much years. It <laughs> took a while. To, no, but even once I decided to move, how do you them, even transport? They needed to be reboxed. Mm. I had to figure out a, a trucking company, get through customs, all that oh, shit. shit. Yeah, they yeah. actually got. I ended up shipping them to LA this year, and I and I'm like mostly in New York now, but in LA is where I have like the house, the space, the space. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The records got to LA this summer, and and I hired someone to custom build some shelves Sick. for me. For the sure. shelves got delivered today. <laughs> oh, dude. dude! So my this records are still in, to, yeah. they're still in boxes. This is finally coming together, yes. dude. Congratulations! So are you going to are you gonna, like block out a week and go to LA and just like unbox them? I don't, them I don't like, even know how long. This it's is the only thing me. that took longer than the Camron album, dude. Is yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Getting your wow. record collection yes. just put together, exactly. bro. The records wasn't there. Yeah, exactly. Are you going to do it alphabetically or by genre? How do you it's even both, organize? It's both, and I like. I'm definitely. I think I'm going to. I'm sure I'm going to keep a similar system to how I had them before. So there'll be like a section that's hip hop, then that's alphabetical. You got to hire like an archivist for your own collection. I'm going to do it myself because I'm just like, that's just what I do. You're too, like, you're too anal about your, yeah, your baby. Can, yeah, but it's, you know, certain genres will be alphabetical and certain genres will just be like in whatever right, mental yeah. system of like, whatever. All the G house is over here. Oh my God. <laughs> all the Taylor over here. Yeah, all the T-Swizz. <laughs> well, A-Track, uh, sounds like you got a lot on your plate, so we're going to get you out of here. Yeah. But before we see you go, actually, mm. before we get into the bonus content mm. and before we let you out of here, um, mm-hmm. we would love to offer up some constructive criticism Yeah, because obviously you're doing well. Celebrity Net Worth says you're at 12 million. Yeah, again, congrats, um, bro. Crazy. Congrats. New music. 
just dropped music coming soon. Mm-hmm. Uh, take it or leave it is constructive criticism. How is just yeah. take it? Um, mm-hmm. I think Danny took both pieces and he's doing phenomenal. Yeah, look at him. Bro. Um, he's first now, up, he's now a podcaster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. First up, sign us to Fool's Gold. Yeah. You ever had a podcast on the label? Yeah. Come on, bro. Hey, you, maybe it's time for some new verticals. I mean, no. if, you're, if you're geeked on this, uh-huh. right? This is, just follow your gut, bro. Yeah, is, it, is it making me feel like I want to tell my friends about it? Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Probably man. not. We'll, we'll, we'll see what promotion. If you guys have hits. scratches on your intro song, I heard it. Oh well, that's shout out Weedis, bro. Dave's like, yo. Dave's like, uh, yo, how was the two hours of the podcast? You're like, what podcast? Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So yeah, again, we're we're in we're indie, bro. We're independent, right? We can yeah. we'll okay. sign to anybody. Mm-hmm. Um, another piece of constructive criticism that also go. is just a request. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> what's your holiday schedule looking like, dude? You free? Celebrating Hanukkah with the family. What's the plan? I was gonna say, which holidays are we talking about? Yeah, because <laughs> uh, Christmas, Dece- the December one, the winter yeah. ones. Yeah, because uh, we're thinking of throwing a, a holiday party, and uh, we need a DJ. Uh, I don't know if we can afford the twelve million dollar man, but <laughs> if you're looking to do any charitable works dur- during the holidays, yeah. uh-huh. we'll holler at you, and you know there might be a, we'll get you in, we'll get you a set in there. Do it as like a tax write off, right? Yeah, it's like a, dude, it's charity, exactly, right, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, playing a bunch of bangers to wayward youths. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Your account that is uh, fixing the $12 million net worth, which is clearly wrong. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it's too high or too low. Um, have him, you know, write this off as a tax. Well, maybe yeah. this all goes together. If I sign you guys to the Fool's oh, Gold Podcast bro. Network, Three signing signing the we got to play each other's parties. Fool's Gold <laughs> training day. Yeah, you want us to play it? Yeah, Fool's we'll, Gold day off. Yeah, we'll yeah. do a live pod a day off, dude. <laughs> well, you know, the podcast stage. Doesn't the Roots Picnic have a podcast stage? A lot of festivals That's now have a thing. podcast yeah. stage, yeah. 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 Which okay. is fucking, I guess it's just like, and hey, if you're if you're taking too much Molly, go to the podcast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah chill out over there. Yeah. And honestly, none of those podcasts are the only podcast that matters. So again, A-Track, thank you so much, dude. What do you want to plug? Where can the kids follow you? Go off, dude. Uh, follow me at Track <laughs> <laughs> on all platforms. Yeah, yeah it is. A-T-R-A-K. Where should we stream music that gets you the most bread? You personally, it's, honestly, it's kind of all the same. I yeah. don't know. Yeah, I might. Yeah, all my shit. It's everywhere. all Pringles everywhere. Yeah, yeah. From- <laughs> Once you pop, you can't stop. Exactly. No. Yeah. Um, you wasn't there. Out now. You wasn't there. Out now. If Free. You're, out hey, now. If you're trying to learn how to DJ, I highly recommend the. A track signature edition of the Rain 70 mixer. I got there my own is, mixer dude. out. Damn, a signature yeah, mixer, bro. Yep. Okay. That's pretty fire. That's pretty Can cool. we record pods on that? <laughs> Possibly. Ooh, yeah. shit. For all the aspiring podcasters as well. It does ha- kind of have a sound card built in. We should have a Throng Fit signature Zoomy, dude. <laughs> yes, exactly. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Get Zoom on the phone. Yeah, let's get Zoom up. Um, yeah, it's just A track everywhere. Fuck yeah. A track, oh, yeah, thank you for coming. Thank you so much, bro. Only podcast that matters. Chef, take us out. Yeah.